The Cube's live coverage is made possible by funding from Dell Technologies, creating technologies that drive human progress. Hey everyone, good to see you. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE's coverage of day one of MWC 23 from Barcelona. We're having a great day so far. The theme of this conference, Dave, is velocity. I feel like we've been shot out of a canon of CUBE content already on day one. We've been talking with, today's ecosystem day. We've been talking about the ecosystem, the importance of open ecosystem and why, and we're going to be unpacking that a little bit more next. You know, Lisa, what used to be Mobile World Congress and is now MWC, it was never really intended to be sort of a consumer show, but with the ascendancy of smartphones, it kind of, they sucked all the air out yeah. of the, the room. But really we're seeing the enterprise come really into focus now as the telco stack disaggregates, and enterprise is complicated. Enterprise is complicated, telecom is complicated. We have a guest here to unpack that with us. Chris Balloon joins us, the Senior Managing Director of Telecom Practice at Dell. Chris, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks very much for having me. So you've been in the telecom industry for a long time. Talk about some <laughs> of the things that you've witnessed over the last couple of decades and really help us understand the complexity that is telecom. Yeah, well, it's nothing, nothing more complex. Uh, look, I, got, I was privileged to start my career in Telco 20 years ago in Canada working with other telecoms globally, and so I got a good picture of, of how they operate, what's important to them. Um, but uh, I was, it's, it's come full circle for me. I, I got into IT and come all the way back now uh, to helping telcos figure out how to operate, and so it's been a, it's been a great journey. What are no, some of the, oh, sorry. Dave. Please, go ahead. I was just going to say, unpack some of the complexity that we yeah. see now. Obviously, we think telecom, we, and you talked about the consumerization, we have this expectation that we can get anything on our, our mobile devices 24 For by sure. seven from any part of the world, but there's a lot of complexity in the industry as it's evolving. What are some of the complexities and how is Dell helping address that? Uh, look, I think the transformation from, uh, from traditional monolithic architectures to cloud-based architectures is maybe the, most, uh, the single largest complex transformation any industry's done um, in the last 20 years. And uh, it, it's, it's not just a technology transformation, it's, it's critically an operational transformation. And so I think that's really at the heart of it is, we've seen a real shift this year from conversations last year were around how this stuff gets turned on, can it work, does it work, to a conversation around how does it work, how do I operationalize it, what are the implications to my teams. And so we've got teams struggling with uh, knowledge and uh, competency gaps, we've got people figuring out how to get this stuff working at scale. Yeah, so I mean, you think about telcos, you know, a lot of engineers, but, but a lot of the stuff is done kind of, I call it in the basement, yeah. kind of hidden, right? And they make it work, right? And, and that transformation that you're talking about toward this more agile, open ecosystem, moving fast, cloud native, new services coming in, right. new monetization models, that does require a different operating model. How similar, given your background in both you know, IT and telco, how similar is it to the transformation that occurred in IT in terms of the operation, uh, operating model, which some companies are still going through. Look, I think we're privileged actually to be able to do this 10 years after IT went through it, and there's a lot of patterns that are, are definitely the same. There's no question there's, there's, uh, there's differences. The applications are far different. The, uh, the timing and, and issues in the RAN are far different. Um, and the distributed size of these deployments is different. But the learnings around how to deploy uh, cloud native technology, how to organize around this, these platforms, and uh, back to the operationalization, how to deploy them and operate them at scale, uh, it took IT a decade to figure that out, and uh, hopefully with the learnings that we've got from that, we can, we can rush through it here in a few years or less. One of the other big differences, of course, is public policy and regulation, right? <laughs> you, know, you don't really have that so much in the IT world. Right. Sometimes you have no regulation. You know, yeah. Google, Facebook, do whatever you want and we'll figure it out 20 years later. How much of a factor is that in terms of the complexity? And and are the new greenfield players, are they bound by similar sort of restrictions or can they move faster? What's the dynamic there? Look, there's no question that greenfield is faster than brownfield. Doesn't matter whether that's telco or IT. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I think, the, I, I think we're, we're at a place in, in history where we're watching some of the early, the early movers uh, testing some of these theories. Um, but I would tell you just again, just in the last few days uh, leading up to this event, talking with our customers and our partners, 
it's, it's clear that even the first movers are struggling with the operational complexity of these platforms. Um, and as a, you know, I think Dell's position in IT for the last decade as a platform systems integrator uh, is very much going to continue to play out uh, in the, in, we're being asked to play that role here as we try to bring some of the cloud native operating uh, competencies to the, to the table. Mm. And where are you having customer conversations these days? Is it at, is it at the IT level? Is it, is it higher since networking is essential for any business and any yeah. organization to, to be able to deliver what the end user is demanding? Of course. Look, I, we, we've seen a, a real shift, as I mentioned, from the technology proof points to the operational proof points. How do we, uh, how do we make sure that not only the business case is valid, but that we can maintain these new changes and these new operating models at scale, uh, at the right operating cost. And those are very healthy conversations because the success of this transformation to cloud architecture and edge computing and everything else is predicated on the idea that we can get cloud uh, running at scale in the network. Um, but I think the, 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 it's, it's very much use case driven and, and we're going to see, we're finally seeing some edge use cases that are driving consumption of, uh, of those edge use cases for sure. You know, I said earlier I was in the keynotes and it took 45 minutes to get to the topic of security. Hmm. It was I think the third or fourth or even fifth speaker. But finally, 45 minutes in, mentioned security. And I think that's because security is kind of a given in this world, it's a hardened environment. Yep. Um, but that security model changes as well. The cloud brings a shared responsibility model. If it's multi-cloud, which it is, then it's shared responsibility across multiple clouds. Yeah. You know, you've got now developers who are sure. being asked to be responsible for security. So that's another part of the complexity. We're kind of unpacking complexity here, aren't we? And that's right. Just throwing more things in the cake. <laughs> Look, I, security is, uh, I, it's, a, it's an indication of, of this shift from what to how uh, very much includes security. And I think we're seeing security come to the forefront. Uh, Dell has a, we, we, you know, our philosophy is intrinsic security at all levels of the, of the deployment, everything from the infrastructure all the way through to the delivery and, and the and, and the through management. the supply chain. And through supply yeah. chain, all the way through to the delivery of our technology integrated with other people's technology to ensure that the security is intrinsic in those deployments. And those, those integrations, as, we, as we're getting more and more involved in zero touch deployments and helping carriers stand up these, these uh, cloud platforms at scale, uh, one of the ways to make sure that it's done repeatedly and, and securely is to integrate those things at the factory or have your, you know, have a, your infrastructure partner take accountability for doing some of that uh, pre-day zero. Well, the lab announcement that you guys have is, is I, th I've, I wrote about this, that that's pretty key, I think, because if you can certify in the lab, that's one of the other big differences. We, we talk a lot about the similarities between you know, enterprise tech of the 90s and, yeah. and the disaggregation of the enterprise stack but you didn't have so-called converged infrastructure back then, and even when you had converged infrastructure, it was like a skew that was bolted on. Yep. Now you've got engineered systems. You're starting with engineered systems, but you've got now the lab so that the ecosystem, and you've got self-certification. Those, I think, are key investments that, you know, you, if you're thinking, why Dell? A you need a company like Dell who's got the resources to make those investments and actually kind of force that through. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's I mean, right. I think we're, we're you know, the, the value of, of uh, the la again, the learnings from these last 10 years of integration is just, is just that understanding what the major blockers are uh, should provide us with an accelerated roadmap for, for solving some of these problems as we encounter them over the next year or two in telecoms. Uh, no question. There's always regional differences in telecom, right? In the United States, you know, years ago, decades ago, sort of, you know, blew apart the telco industry. I, I would argue, many would I think as well, that that actually made the U.S. less competitive. You got, certainly have you know, national interests around the world, across the European continent, certainly in, in APAC as well. How do you see that, uh, uh, what are you hearing from those different regions? How do you see that affecting the adoption of some of the new technologies that you guys are promoting? Yeah, look, there's, there's, leaders, uh, there's, there's leaders and laggards in every market, I would say. Um, I think we've been at this now uh, trying to stand up some of these, these cloud infrastructures and cloud RAN projects and virtual RAN projects. We've been at that now long enough to know that, uh, that yeah, there, there's not so much regional patterns as there are patterns of companies that believe deeply that these architectures are going to lead to the right type of innovation and allow them to, you know, to build new markets and new sources of revenue. Uh, and those that are deeply committed to that, to that structure are the ones willing to, willing to lean in and, uh, and sort of blaze a path, right? 
So I would say that pattern is, is definitely emerged. I don't, we don't see, uh, the larger the organization, certainly the larger the carrier, the deeper their resources on engineering and, and their ability to pivot and train those resources to become cloud capable. Uh, that's a factor. We see a lot of conversations. Dell's got a very large day two managed services business on the IT side and, and as we pivot those day two managed services practices into managing telco cloud platforms and, and edge cloud platforms, um, I think it's, it's the companies that don't have the depth or the skill um, or the experience are the ones that are, that are asking us for the help there, for sure. How much has Dell been able to leverage, I mean in the tel telecom systems business, I see you know, a lot of new faces at Dell, yeah. uh, a lot of folks like yourself that have telco experience. How about the services business? Were you able to sort of realign your existing folks? Or was it, or was it similar, you had to bring in people from the, the industry? It, it, it's both, actually. So the it, services is critical because the, yeah. the, the, the industry desperately needs systems integration across the board. And I think if we can convince the, uh, the industry to treat telco clouds as a horizontal platform, then the idea of a platform integrator is, a, is, a, you know, is definitely, it's valued and in fact, it's, it's required, I think, for the success of these projects. The services team at Dell, uh, is comprised of the folks who uh, obviously run the pieces of the services business that are uh, really no different in their construct. Building telco clouds is not that different from building IT clouds, so the elements are the same. Those teams, are, those teams persist, but definitely the apps are different and the, and the, and the, uh, the support is different uh, and the requirements for uptime and availability are different. And so we've brought in uh, services specialists to sort of uh, to, to create the glue between the, the customers and our, and our existing sales depth. Do you have a favorite customer story that really articulates the value of, of what Dell is able to deliver in telecom with the inherent complexities that we talked about? Yeah, look, I, it, it's not that well known, but you know, the, the, the day zero, uh, zero touch deployment factory integration capabilities that Dell has, we've been, we've been deploying that in IT for years. And you know, we're, we're, we've got a, a couple of projects globally now where we're not only designing and testing the stack in, in our labs and with our partners, um, but we're loading that stack in a known good architecture into third party and Dell hardware in a, in a factory integration setting and shipping it to site with really nothing left to do but, but connect power and, and, uh, and connectivity. And so from, a, from a, an engineering standpoint, the complexity of deploying cloud into thousands of data centers, uh, we have examples of that that are being shipped continent by continent and, and being deployed in, a, in days and weeks as opposed to months. And so I think the Taking some of the pain out of deployment uh, and taking some of the building some repeatability into those uh, into those deployments is a, is a very big deal. Those are those are great great projects. The next stage of that, of course, is helping them get to a place where the opera the, the operations of those platforms is just as easy as the deployment. What's going to be different? Go ahead, look ahead to 2030. Let's go backwards from there. What's the world going to be like? What do people need to know in terms of what's coming? That's a great question. Uh, if I think if I if I could see that far ahead, I, I wouldn't probably be sitting here. <laughs> yeah, but you have wisdom. I, yeah, I, <laughs> from, you know, the, uh, look, experience. If, if we play back, if we play back what's happened in the data centers, um, uh, you know, in the IT data centers, and you mentioned the, the you know the disaggregated systems uh, shift that happened a decade ago, um, you know, those once the applications uh, rearchitected to cloud native architectures and could take advantage of the platform changes. The, once the resiliency is built into the application instead of into the platforms, these things become more and more touchless. And I think the, the real double digit payback on, on this shift to cloud native, yeah, we haven't begun to talk about it yet because we haven't, we're not anywhere close to the level of automation that can be achieved once we get to true cloud native and microservices based application architecture. That's a big shift. Um, and it's going to take a while. It took, took companies like SAP and others almost a decade to get that done. Uh, I think it'll happen faster here, um, but it's going to take us some time. Some of the things that you've heard, this is only day one of the conference, but anything that you've heard today or that you're looking forward to hearing in terms of how telecom is evolving and, and kind of playing catch up? Yeah, look, I, we really believe this is the year that uh, the edge use cases come alive. I think we're, we're, uh, we've been, almost every conversation I've been in, uh, we've been asked, you know, sort of where's the, where are these use cases that are driving actual deployments and revenue and that sort of thing. I think carriers are very much interested in trying to figure out customer edge, very much trying to figure out their own edge. Uh, Dell, of course, has uh, both of those edges in mind. Uh, we've got a very large enterprise edge business unit as well as our, our telco BU. And so that's, uh, I think this is the year we really start to figure out where those, we're seeing good deployments now in, in production at scale 
And I think this is the year that starts to really take shape. Well, and it seems like, just in hearing some of the, the carriers talk, they, they want to uh, avoid what happened with the over-the-top vendors, okay, and they want to monetize the data that they have about the network. It looks like they want to charge for API access. Yep. Okay, developers are going to love that, right? Especially at the volumes that we're seeing here. But I feel like there's a you know, potential blind spot of disruption coming, you know, like the over-the-top vendors, you know, that created all this innovation. I can yeah. see developers, whether it's at the edge or new services, that customers really want to buy, they really sure. value. Different than, hey, I own this data and you need it, and I'm going to charge you for it, versus, hey, I'm going to create something that's really compelling. You know, an analog would be Netflix or other services that you get with, maybe it's private wireless that can do some things, and you know, that to me is the interesting opportunity here that I, I feel like is a blind spot for traditional telcos, because yeah. they've kind of got that mindset of, okay, you know, we're going to monetize, let's do it. We're, but they don't have that creativity mindset yet. You know? This industry has been given an opportunity to monetize almost every major transformation in technology, and, and many of them have slipped through our fingers, right? And yeah. this one is different because it's, it's inextricably tied to the network. Um, and I think the, the, you know, if you mentioned mobile phones earlier, I mean, I think what we saw in innovation in mobile was that we had no idea what was going to happen at the edge of that edge until yeah. someone created it. And so you have to have those in operating environments have to show up before the developers will spend the time to test them out and figure out what works. And so I, we haven't begun to believe, even understand, I don't think, what's coming uh, once we figure out a way to get lo ultra low latency, reliable connectivity at the edge. And I think developers have that open canvas and they're going to paint that's right. what that edge looks like. And that's why, I mean, I kind of get concerned about, you know, the, to me, the way to deal with developers, you give them a platform, say go create. That's right. A, as opposed to, okay, pay to get access which you're going to have to, but I mean, there's other, there's other third parties that are going to fund that. I, I get it. Yeah. Uh, but, but there's a big open field that is going to get plowed here. Yes. And it's going to throw off some you know, serious benefits to, to consumers. Yeah. So. And that's what we all want. We have that expectation that Absolutely. it's going to, there's going to be a whiff them. It's going to be a what's in it for me, right? What's in it for me. Yeah, Absolutely. That's right. That's right. Of I was going to say thank you so much. You want to add one more no, thing? No, I'm good, thank you. I was you. just going to thank yeah. you so much for stopping by and talking to us about Dell's presence in telecom, how you're helping customers manage the complexity and the opportunities that really are there. We appreciate your insights and your time. Thanks so much, I really appreciate it. All right, our pleasure. Thanks guys. For our guests and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live in Barcelona at MWC 23. Dave and I will be right back with our next guest.